Okay, that's all for the company video. Um, um, so, hello everyone. Welcome to the American uh, Intro Scan webinar. And today uh, we have our female speaker, Mr. Vanik, to be our presenter. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Mm. So, let's see. Screen. Yeah, so can you see it? You gave me the host? No, 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 not up yet. So I will just have a short presentation, then uh -huh. I'll give the host to you. Okay. Um, so if you attended uh, our American Mini Machine Launch Webinar, you know that every dental life want to be fully digitalized. It is also the same with dental clinic. So in which part? In the scanning part. You know, nowadays still a lot of dental clinics use impression to have the, to have the patient data. But with impression, you have a lot of problems in accuracy, more like cost is time consuming and rework. And considering the current situation, COVID-19 and people, patients want sanitation and they want less contact. So here comes our intro scanner. With intro scanner, you can solve all these problems with the impression and sanitation and contact. Mm. So for the intro scanner, it's not just a product for the dental clinic, but also a product for the dental lab. So in today's webinar, we also have clients from lab and from dental office. And you will be surprised to know the number. Actually, 45% of the labs plan to have an intro scanner so that they can lease it or give it free to their dentists in this way and they will get, get the cases. And um, in this year, we have a very big contract. Only one contract is $1 million, $500,000 in $1 million. It's just the intro scanner and you can tell the market's need for this product. So to promote this product to the dental clinic and dental lab, we have our special offers, sorry. So um, by December 31st, that is the end of the year, and we plan to have 20 advocates in the American market. So for the advocates, you can either from dental clinic or from a dental lab, you will be able to get uh, our camel intro scanner at a very special offer. And if you have the plan to become a speaker, and then we can talk about it. It's possible you can become a that global speaker like Mr. Vanek. He's been working with us for many years. And also you might be able to get the financial support. So we only have the on 20 ad advocates available for the whole American market. And please contact your regional sales manager for more details. So um, that's all for my petition. Now let's welcome Vanek and say uh, what 
he knows about interest scanner, why camera interest scanner is a must and the only thing for you. Just a moment. Okay, Manik, you're now the host. All right, let's see if it's working. Uh, let's see, this is mine and share the screen. Okay, I hope everybody sees this. Good morning to everybody overseas. Uh, it's a real pleasure to talk with friends and people who I know in the US. Uh, this has been really a year hard year for me because I have a place in Florida and I could never go there. We were not allowed to travel. And last time I was there was in Christmas. So this year again, we can't go. But, you know, somehow we all are in the same boat and uh, somehow we all survive. First of all, I want to say thank you to IDAT to, you know, have me as a speaker here for this small presentation. And uh, I must also say that it's been very interesting for me the last two, three years working together with IDAT, developing products like the new shade guide. Uh, if anybody's seen that, it'll blow you away. It's, some, it's a whole new idea fantastic stains and all those kind of things. But before or another time we can speak about those things, let's talk about the intro scanning. About 35 years ago, that's when I was uh, a part with the uh, Sirona. At that time it was Siemens. I was involved, five of us, in developing the CEREC system for the dental laboratories and we were working with the CEREC 2 uh, machine. We, was, we started with Professor Merman with CEREC 1 and this was the first ever milled bridge on a CEREC machine. I had designed this 35 years ago. You see the connector was on the wrong place because the software is only for inlays. And uh, we tried to design a bridge with this uh, software. And you see the surface looks very strange, but that was the start. Everything was in 2D. And uh, you know everybody was laughing at me. They said, ah, cat can will never happen. And I was one of the five which really pushed this uh, whole system. And you know there were lots of obstacles in the beginning to get started. And now this has become a standard. You know, everybody's forgotten the hard work we had to put into it. The, the problem which we all have nowadays is, you know, in conventional work, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a dentist or a lab, is basically, you know, you know, this kind of stuff happens. You know, I always say artists unknown because uh, maybe the prep was good, but the impression was bad. You know, things like this happen and, uh, you know, uh, that means you have to call the dentist and tell him, look, you need to make a new impression. And uh, they say, ah, no, I can't get the patient to come back again, you know, fix it, try to find the margin yourself. And these kind of things are, you know, it, you know, it gives you a bad feeling as a technician or even as a dentist, you have to do something like this. You know, the work is never going to be good. And uh, so our big hope is or was that we could uh, avoid this and, you know, look into the thing, you know, and start with something that we can see it before it leaves the dental office. And the idea was intro scanning. But what's been happening with whole intro scanning is the companies out there are really taking advantage of many of uh, us dentists and technicians. And I've been seeing this. What I want to show you on this picture, this is very interesting. On the right hand side uh, are scanners and milling machines. Okay, this is the way it started 35 years ago. There was a milling machine and a, a intro scanner. So then companies got onto the idea, which was selling milling machines and scanners. Oh, let's also start uh, using our scanners, which we made from milling machines to do intro scans. And this whole thing somehow I have been feeling it's not been working very good. I'll tell you why. Other systems on the market are pure scanners. That means they are here to basically replace or go in the beginning together with the impression materials. So left is basically standalone scanners, right are milling machines with scanners. And this is on the left, this is what we want to talk about. And I want to show you some of the disadvantages some of the other scanners really have. Uh, you know, what are people saying? You know, uh, they are saying there is really no bad intro scanner. And that's true. Today, there is no bad intro scanner on the market. It's just how good you market yourself, okay? 
uh, it has also to do naturally with the skills, how you operate the scanner, how you use it, how you turn it, how you, you know, things work. Uh, the, the, the thing is, we need accuracy. And this accuracy nowadays is not just, people think the scanner gives us the accuracy. A big part of the accuracy is the software, the matching software. You have to imagine, these are all single pictures which have to match together. There's an algorithm behind it matching them. That's what gives us the accuracy and not a scanner, you know, like a scanner which you have in your, in your hand. This is not, this has nothing to do with accuracy. It's the software putting it together. That's why uh, I did last week a lecture in Dubai, uh, online lecture, and a speaker before me, he said, Sirona just got better because they updated their software, okay? And this shows how important the software is. It's the software which at the end of the day makes the scanner better and better and better. It gets better and better every day, okay? So that's the whole thing. So I would say there's no bad scanner on the market. There's just two expensive scanners on the market. That's the problem. If you look at the scanners on the market, you know, things to consider when selecting an iOS internal scanner. There's so many different scanners. They all somehow look in a way similar. You know, they have a, a head up front here and then there's a, a processing part back here, okay? But something very important is all of them, I think, are good in accuracy. Resolution, they all are good. Now you can start saying, okay, we can take more megapixel, more megapixel, more megapixel. And it's like with the, with the phones, you know, the bigger, the more megapixel you have, it's just, you can make a bigger picture, but it's not that your picture gets better with much more megapixels. It's only if you want to make a big poster, then it gets better, okay? So resolution, like people say, it's okay. You know, all of them are good. Sens sensitivity to surface, that's very important. Some scanners have hard time scanning shiny surfaces, shiny scanning metal surfaces, and those kind of things. A very important thing to all scanners is the openness. And this is very, very, very important. And here, many companies are really playing with our uh, not understanding. I'll give you a very simple uh, thing. You know, everybody says they're open. For example, Sirona says they have an open system. Yes, they are open, but when I get, I can only get an STL. If a dentist sends me with the Sirona a colored scan, other systems, it's called OBJ. OBJ scans are like STL, but with color. Sirona will not allow you to export that to an STL, to a, to a lab. You can only export the STL. So that's for me, again, has nothing to do with openness. It's just, uh, it wants to hurt us, okay? Then easy of use, speed, size, weight, software. The software, I think, is very important. How easy is it to use? Price is becoming the most important issue because since all these systems are very, very similar in accuracy, the price is becoming. Why would I spend three times the money for a scanner like this than for something like this down here, okay? Like a Cameo. It makes no sense and you'll see that afterwards. Learning step is easy. When I got the Cameo scanner, basically what I got was a, a small leaflet like you see here. And this leaflet showed me everything what I had to know how to set up the scanner. So it was basically uh, this leaflet, which basically, you know, showed me everything. That's the way I learned it. And naturally YouTube videos and those kind of things. So if we talk about the Cameo, which we'll talk now, the Cameo intro scanner has one big advantage. It could go into the market and look at all the scanners which are around it and try to make a scanner which is basically, let's say, fulfills all the needs which, which we are looking for. And so the scanner, what do we have here? We have, first of all, an output data, STL, OBJ, and PLY. Very important. The computer which we need. I'm using a laptop at the moment. The more power your computer has, the faster the scanner runs, okay? That's important to know. So if you uh, look at like the graphic card, you need an NVIDIA graphic card here for the GTX 2060. Uh, if you have a desktop version with a card, you can actually put something stronger in and it's much faster. So the scanners nowadays, they depend all on this. And the nice thing is that we don't need to buy 
a closed system means a, a machine which you have a screen and a, a PC in it because you can't really update those or only for lots of money. Here you buy something yourself like a, a desktop which you can put on a card and you can change the graphic card, you can change things in it yourself and make it faster and faster when things get uh, faster. Now some of the important points here, first of all the tip, we have one of the smallest tips on the market. If we look at the tip of this iTero here, the tip size is, I would say, half width of comparing to an iTero. Or the Cameos is half the width of an iTero. iTero uh, is very, very large. And they use it for orthodontics, for the poor kids, you know, to go in the mouth there. Then the accuracy, I say, this is a marketing point. Yes, it's accurate. It's very accurate. Powderless, it's very important that it's powderless, okay? Then it's in color, that's also important. It has to be in color nowadays. Without color, you know, it wouldn't work. And the color is really nice. When you look at the color which you get, it, it gives you really a feeling, ah, that's the, the tissue color. It's not like a fake tissue color. Then the weight is very light, around 380, 390 grams. The speed is high speed. And this is, again, depends on, on your PC. The faster your PC, the faster the camera, okay? This is a very, very important point. I'll talk about it later on also, soft tissue removal. This is something, when you do a scan and you get, let's say, your tongue on it or your jaw or something, most of the scanners have a hard time. The worst on the market at the moment is Sirona's scanner. Sirona's scanner basically Takes, has so much debris, there's no soft tissue removal or the dentist don't know how to do it or use it because we in our lab, we get every day, I would say about 40 scans coming in from various systems, from Sirona, from Tree Shape, from everything. And I've been seeing the best scans which come in are, I can say like iTero, uh, CareStream and Cameo. These are the systems which give us the best, the cleanest scans because the moment you have a lot of debris around it. The dentists have a hard time scanning in the mouth, trying to get the occlusion together because that always gives problems. The user, uh, okay, here. The user interface, which you see here, is very important how easy it is because many systems have now overloaded their screen and they start. We look at that office, the practical demonstration, you will see we don't have a problem that the, the screen is, that's too much information there. I mentioned this before, open output, STL, OBG, PLY, uh, high resolution, that's normal. Calibration is very, very easy. You have a box like you see here, you basically plug in your, your camera on one side, the other side goes to the USB, you hit the start button, and it takes uh, you know, two minutes or three minutes, and it calibrates itself. You don't even have to think anything. So everything has been done very, very uh, in a smart way. And the dynamic indicator shows if the scanner is ready. That's this green light back here, which basically shows you how the scanner is in a ready mode or in a, or has a, in a problem mode, okay? So the next thing is tip sizes. If you look at this, it's just to symbolize the different sizes. It's a little bit bigger than actually, but I just want to give you an idea, uh, like the, uh, the tree shape, I think, has a very, very large uh, head up in front here. Then uh, the Cameo has one of the smallest. Up till now, the Medit was very, very good. And we were using the Medit. We liked the Medit very much. But now I have started to uh, convince our dentists to use the Cameo because the Cameo is, again, much easier to handle and calculates the pictures much better. So. Something very important is the head in front here with the camera lenses, it's heated. So it's not like other systems, they have a small ventilation with heat, hot air here, and it blows hot air to keep it anti-fogging in front. The problem what we've been seeing is we use systems like that, patients complain about sensitivity when the hot air is always blowing on the freshly prepped tooth. So we don't have this here, the head is automatically heated with the, with the camera. There's a, uh, connection in here which heats the head so it doesn't fog up, okay? Then the whole head here can be autoclaved and uh, we do a lots of uh, 
we go and scan at the hospital in Switzerland for sleep apnea devices. And over there, because of COVID, we have to go through a whole cleaning protocol. So the head, so we have, you know, we have various uh, tips here and it's very easy to autoclave them or to put them in a sterilizing uh, liquid, lightweight and all those things. So, so it's really a complete open system. And this is important. It is open. There are no fees. You don't have to pay anything. It's, it's basically you scan and it puts out the data which we want, STL, OBJ, PLY, and basically that's it. It's, there is no hidden cost. This is very, very important. And what can we do? Actually, we can do everything. We can do crowns, veneers, implants, bridges, inlays, orthodontics. Uh, last week I was at a hospital in Basel and what they want to use the scanner for is kids which have, uh, I don't know, babies, which I don't know what you call in English, which have like a defect here. And so they have to uh, scan the palate when they're small babies. And then afterwards, uh, basically uh, print something to make something out of metal to keep it in a new position. So I don't know the English uh, term for that, but they were very amazed because the problem is smooth surfaces to scan that is very, very difficult. And the Cameo again did a fantastic job. The Cameo also has this easy motion sensing operation. What does this mean is the camera has got sensors. So you can say forwards, backwards, left, right. So you can use it as like a, like a mouse, like an air mouse to do functions. So you don't have to uh, do it with your mouse on the table. So you can move it forwards, backwards, or you have also a foot control if you want. Then uh, the clinical toolkit, this is something I'm not sure in our part of the world, people are not really using it, but it's in here. This is for the dentist to draw the margin, uh, to give information on the margin, you know, like different things, information which he wants to send the lab. In our part of the world, most of the dental assistants make the scans. And so the dentist, uh, the lab has to take care of that situation. So it's really a good function. It's fantastic to have but I've not seen any dentists really using it. Software updates without any annual fee. You know, if you look at some other systems, you have annual fees, you know, let's say you buy a tree shape, you pay every year a lots of money end of the year to be ready for updates. Uh, Sirona now calls it uh, like uh, be a part of the club. So you play a service fee to be a member of the club and then you get your free updates which it's like a hidden, if you're not a member, you don't get it, but you have to pay for that membership, okay? Uh, Itero, same, you have to pay a monthly fee. So this is what I really don't like. If, if they're not free, I don't use it, okay? So, and it's again, professional, uh, there's a professional team in Europe, in the US, which can do the technical uh, support. Something very important is the scanner, before you start using it, it heats up. Not many people are talking about this. Many years ago, we did a study which showed if you have like a milling machine, anything which has got metal in it, one degree room temperature change makes two micron change in accuracy. So if your room changes by 10 degrees, you have 20 microns change. That's why the scanner heats up to its actual temperature, the temperature which it needs to be in that position and you will always get the same quality data, okay? So it's not that when it's cold or it's warm, you have different accuracies. We always have the same accuracy level. And the heating up only takes a few seconds, maybe a minute, a minute and a half the first time. And when it's on, it keeps it in this position, okay? So, you know, these are very, very important things to know. Uh, the scan head, like I said, can be reused. You know, it's good to have enough of it. And it comes with two scan heads uh, when you get it. If you look at some of the scanners on the market, if we compare it, like I said, the Trios has a monthly fee. Depends on the country where you are. Serec Omnicam officially, or Serec Prime Scan officially, doesn't have a monthly fee. But they make you join the club, then you have to, uh, you know, pay for the club and then you get everything free. Uh, the CareStream interval scanner basically is same like the iOS. There is no, uh, you know, monthly free, uh, fee charged. All the scanners have very similar technology, you know, uh, the triangulation technology 
And basically, that's why I say all the scanners are very, very good, all of them. Plus, minus the weight of all of them are very, very similar. And uh, so at the end of the day, it really comes to how the cost is going to be of the scanner. So I, I saw this on the internet and I compared this. Uh, they were saying, you know, speed of the TRIOS is very, very fast. And it's true, the TRIOS 4 is very fast. The, I, the iOS from Cameo is just a little bit slower, not very, you know, not a big thing. People say Prime Scan is very fast. It's, there's not a big difference. There is no big difference. But, and again, systems like, for example, the iDite Cameo, you can have a CAD software with it if you want. It's the clinical version of ExoCAD for the dentist. If the dentist wants to use it uh, for chair site uh, designs, uh, he can do that. So, you know, that's why uh, the system, it's, it's a real complete system. And the advantage was coming to the market at a late point. Very interesting is actually the price. You know, in Europe, uh, if you look at the Sirona system, you know, you're talking between, I think, 45 and 55,000 uh, euros. It depends uh, which country you buy it, who's the dealer. And uh, if we look at the Cameo, you know, we are under uh, 13,000 euros. So the price in Europe is, uh, it's the lowest price uh, intro scanner on the market and is actually as good as anyone on here. The only thing maybe which is not so good is the marketing. Cameo's marketing is not as good as the Sirona's. Sirona really puts out this information, how fantastic they are, how good they are, and all these kind of things. And at the end of the day, again, it's how do we define accuracy? Accuracy is basically, you know, we want to, when we shoot on a target, you know, we basically have low accuracy and low precision because the bullet holes are everywhere. If we look at low accuracy but high precision that means all the bullets are shooting in the same area all the holes are here so it's very precise but not very accurate okay high accuracy low precision again it's not all together this is the goal high accuracy high precision have all the all your dots in the middle that's what we are uh, aiming for so when people say you know for example like uh, i always bring this sirona because they go around in our country and then they say they have the best system, all other is crap. Uh, the others all are plastic, we have metal. The others are all basically uh, not accurate. We are very accurate, but this is not true because accuracy is not only the scan. This, for example, if you look at this, pictures made, we get this every day into a lab, okay? Here, prime scan, okay? This is to make aligners. If you look at the scan, you see all this debris around it. And all this debris, which you see here, and you also see here on this one, how it's, it's missing half of it on here, it's missing up here. This is because, and this I can show you hundreds of pictures coming in every day. And I can guarantee you, all of you will know this when you get prime scan uh, pictures into your lab. Okay, ah, second. If you look at Camillo's, uh, pictures, they come nicely and clean because the software cleans away all this debris. And for us in the lab also, it's very important that we don't have this debris because here we have multi layers of material, of scan pictures. This gives failures, this gives mistakes. So, you know, it's not true what, what we hear, you know, that they are the most accurate and all that, but they are the best in marketing, okay? So nowadays scanners, which are really getting good on the market, basically clean the, the debris around the, the scan away automatically. Then how do we send it? So when you do a scan, basically you upload it into the iDite cloud platform. So you hit the upload button and it just goes automatically to cloud, uh, the cloud platform. I have developed a software called LOMS. It's, it's, called, it's called Lab Order Management System. It's a system where we are trying to get all the scans in because nowadays we get scans from, you know, uh, from iDite, we get scans from Medit, we get scans from Freeship, we get scans from Sirona, we get scans from Dental Wings and on and on, or CareStream. And then they all have their own platform. That's why I developed one platform 
and I want all the scans to come in there so we are better organized. It's working with us in the lab fantastic and I'm at the moment talking to IDAD to see if we can you know, incorporate this into their cloud platform because this organizes the work. The dentist sees, like on Amazon, the process in the lab. You can show him if you want. You can show him how far you are with the work. All the data he can download and upload in that, in that folder. So it's really, it's an order platform management system. And we are using this since two years. I developed this from scratch. And so I hope that, you know, IDAP will jump onto this. So this was a small advertising for myself, okay? Then how the scanners, you know, for what we use it, I'll, I'll show you just in a moment because, you know, these are just normal pictures like single crowns, veneers, implants, bridges, inlays, aligners. And you see, these are the quality of the scans which we get. You see the picture, the color of the picture is very, very natural. It's not like these, uh, these fake artificial uh, colored pictures. The motion censoring is the thing when you move your, your scanner, it goes to left, to right, up, down, and those, those kind of things. And also this again, very intelligent data optimization, cleaning the data which you see here and getting nice clean uh, scans. The toolkit lets you basically uh, draw the margin and those kind of things. It comes in a very small case and uh, the laptop, I, you know, I cut out the, the upper uh, part of the foam, even the laptop fits in it. So now I've got everything in one case. So I can go to the dental office, I can go to dental hospitals, and also dentists really like it if they have to go to uh, old people's uh, houses to the scan away from their office. And you can scan basically anything. We are at the moment doing some tests with some uh, veterinarians for scanning uh, uh, German shepherds, which the tooth is broken off, which they do a prep, and so we can do a crown on it. So there is a whole new market uh, for this scanner. And like I said, it's a, it's a box. Basically the scanner, the, the, the thing where you put the scanner on and here the calibration uh, kit is missing on this one here. And that's about it. So there's nothing much to it. The clinical toolkit, which I talked about, which if you want to use it, it shows the dentist if they're undercuts, you know, uh, he can adjust the, the occlusion if he wants. He can open the occlusion if he wants. He can extract the margins. Uh, he can import it directly into Exocad because Exocad is uh, working completely uh, in and out with this software. So it's really very, very easy and simple to use. So the workflow is standard. Anybody who has been using an intral scanner will get used to the scanner very, very fast. We have here in Switzerland uh, a dentist. He's very famous in intro scanning. His name is Alessandro De Vigos. He is, uh, he is like one of the gurus, I would call, in intro scanning worldwide. He was one of the people who really pushed Sirona. I was at his office two weeks ago and he gave me a highly shining model. And he said, try to scan it. I scanned it and it blew him away. And he says, oh, I need to get into this scanner. This is, I'm really interested in this because this really shows very, very simple, uh, you know, uh, work. So bite, you know, finding the occlusion is very easy. I'll show you this in a few seconds and let's get started. Okay, let's not look at these pictures and get out of the presentation and see if I can show it to you. One second, screen sharing is stopped. Uh, so, you can see me here. I think so, huh? So this is this is the scanner. Let's see if I can. Uh, let me start share the screen again. Uh, here, huh? Let me just close the presentation. One second. Okay, share. Start the window, you okay? I'm not sure why it's not sharing my screen. Um, Did you take the host away? No, no, I'm not the host. You're still the host. 
Uh, so maybe you can try to first talk. Ah, here, I think I have to press, I saw what it is. It's this one here. Share uh -huh. this one, I got it, I got it. So you see the screen? Yeah. yeah. So this is the software for the scanner. It's called Intral Scan. And this would be if you want to calibrate it. So calibration has already been done. You just hit that button and it starts it. So let me start the Intral Scanning software to give you an idea of what you see here. Uh, I hope it's in English now, otherwise I'll have to quickly change it because I was scanning at the hospital. Oh yeah, so now it's in uh, German. So I go here and I change it to English. Okay. And uh, let's see, now it should be in English, hopefully. And I start it again. Yes, now it's in English. Huh? So the screen which we have here is very, very simple. We have for a new case, load an existing case and save something. We have two types of uh, scan possibility, restorations or orthodontics. Uh, normally when I, uh, if I have a dentist who doesn't want to know too much or he doesn't want to bother too much, he just wants to go and start scanning. I say scan even in the orthodontic mode, even if you're doing a crown. Because once we get those scans in the lab, we will decide where the crown comes. You can tell us which tooth is gonna to be two, two, three, or which one, and we will draw the margin. Because the software which we use will know which tooth it is. So it'll be easier for you. If you don't want to do it like that, then you would select the tooth number and you would say what it is. So I'll first show you with, with this orthodontic style, and then I'll show the rest. Huh? The first thing you do is you select the patient's name. Okay, test, and the dentist here, uh, okay. Once you've selected that, let me switch to orthodontic modus. One second here, I have to make this picture a little bit smaller. Uh, then you go and save it here. And basically what happens is this comes, becomes blue. Okay, so when I switch to orthodontic modus, I don't select anything, I just go here to scan. Automatically, the scanner will ask me upper, lower, and the bite. Okay, so I say scan. Now, the next thing you will see here, the upper jaw I should scan, the lower jaw I should scan, and the bite. This will be the toolkit to do a pre-design, okay? So, let me see if you see me here. Uh, where is, I'm not sure if you see meeting control. I think, uh, one second, zoom. I hope you see me still. Uh, I'm not sure because I don't see any picture. Ah, okay, I see the reason why I don't see you. Okay, I got it here. Okay, uh, this is, it's a little bit difficult here. There we go. Okay, now I got everything right. So, because I have to see myself so I can show you. So now I, I've got a model here. And what I've got on this model is, I just made a, a model which has got like a, a metal on it also, a uh, tooth here. So you can see this and even to scan an implant afterwards. So the, the first thing which you would do is you would pick up the scanner like you see here. And automatically on the screen, you see this uh, square coming and you see this thing here, okay? So the scanner basically, and you go left and right, okay? So you see. It's a highly shiny model I have here, okay? Very difficult for most of the scanners. And this is a metal crown, okay? Very difficult for most of the scanners. And you can see when I'm scanning, what I want to show you also something, like I'm, I'm on this side now here. And let's say I jump to the other side. So I go to this side here and it instantly finds it, okay? I jump back to this side and it instantly finds it. So you see how powerful the software is, the algorithm is.
then when you scan, you basically, you know, I mean, put down the camera for a second that you can see me better here. If I put it down, maybe you see, just have to keep the thing so high up there. Huh? So once, you, once you've done your scans and you see everything is good, you check the area which you want, you know, you see if there's still some holes, fix those holes, turn the camera in a different angulation, and the camera closes the holes. And to give you an idea, companies are all talking about, you know, how uh, their scanners can scan metal and everything, but many of them have to put powder on it. So, let me scan this implant. You see this implant here? It's having a hard time scanning the depth of it. It's not filling that hole. We have a thing here, a function. Let me just uh, go on the side and show it to you here. This function here means metal scan. When I press this, now you will see down in the hole, it will start scanning the... Going down into that implant. And you see, I got a little bit of my hand on it, how it removes the hand. See on the side, the debris which is showing up. And now when I move away, it's the debris is gone. It cleans the debris instantly away. Now, I'll put the camera down for a second. And let's look from underneath. And you see how fast the optimization of data has happened, really fast. And you can see from down here, it scanned the whole implant, okay, downwards. Very, very amazing. Now, the, like you have small holes, like you see here, maybe you can just go over the scan and, and scan those areas. I won't really bother now, you know, like here, ah, oh, here, let's, let's do this a little bit better. So I, I pick up the scanner again. I go to this area. And then I just scan it, huh? And all this debris which is showing up disappears, huh? Have you done the whole jaw at the back? Yeah, I think everything has happened, huh? Here, to give you an idea, this is a shiny surface. And this was what was amazing for them in the hospital for the small kids. They said, this is perfect uh, when they have to do uh, pre-operation models and those kind of things. Keep in mind, this model is really shining, huh? I put my camera down and now I let the computer calculate everything. Okay, boom, it's happened. Now we go to the next thing, okay? If we say we are happy with it, I'm just here, I go to this arrow here, I say complete, and now it'll jump on top to the next, the lower jaw. It's processing the data, it's happened now in a second, boom and it jumps out of the lower jaw. So I can take the lower jaw here, take the camera, and do the same thing here. Huh? I start on the molar. And other systems, they say, go like this. They say, go forward like this. I can do this also, very fast. Okay. If you want to do it fast, you can do it. But uh, this Scan strategy here, what they are recommending is basically to scan like this. Left and right, left and right, left and right, like this, okay? And something, one of the biggest problems many scanners have, they make double incisal edges. We don't have this problem here. We very, very seldom get problems on the incisal edges. You see that happening with most of the scanners. We see that with the uh, Sirona scanners and all those scanners.
So I'm doing like a real, you know, I'm taking my time. And like I said, let me jump from one side to the other. So I've scanned this and I jump to this side. It instantly finds it. You see my fingers on there? And now it just cleans it away. This is what I really like about this data optimization, okay? So a scan has happened. I put my thing down. It cleans everything now. So the scan has been cleaned. There's no real debris, you know, hanging up here or those kind of things. Let's say we are happy, you know, maybe there's still there's two, three small holes like you see here, but I'm not going to bother. It's the opposing side. Say next. Now comes the interesting thing, doing the bite. If we look at the bite, it's really very, very interesting. For orthodontics, if you have a construction bite, works excellent. Sleep apnea devices, you have to have your mouth in protrusion, uh, you know, about 65%, works perfect. You put something in between, like a George Gauche, you fix that position and you can scan it with the George Gauche and it keeps the position. So what I do is I pick up the scanner, I start with one side. So I take the scanner, I go, for example, to the molar back here, and I go up and down, and move forwards. And it'll instantly find the occlusion. So it's found the occlusion. I put my camera down again. It's got one side done. We can check, you know, if it's good. Yeah, it looks okay from the occlusion, but to verify, I will also do the other side. So then I go to the other side here and I take the thing camera up again and it's intelligent enough that it knows that I'm doing the other side. Boom. It's happened, the scan is done and you will see the whole process is basically finished. So now, The scan has happened, the bites are there, both sides, this side and this side, the bite is done. And we say, okay, we are fine, we, everything is good. Uh, let's continue. Now it's optimizing the upper and the lower jaw. And this, you know, this takes, you know, a little bit of time. All the systems take time. And I always say it's about the time which it takes for the impression materials to set. So we are looking maybe four to five minutes uh, until these kind of things happen. It, it depends again on the data size. It's one of the faster systems. Uh, again, prime scan, which is three times the price, takes longer to process the data. Again, because they are fixed with the computer, which is now already not the newest model anymore. And uh, it all depends on, on the hardware you use as a computer processing this data. If I would not use a laptop, if I use a desktop, I would naturally be much faster. But the speed is really not bad. I'm, I'm very surprised. The nice thing, having a laptop is you can move from room to room. Uh, some people say it's not as nice like as a kiosk where you basically have everything in a cart. But again, uh, you can put your own cart together. You know, if you look on, uh, on Alibaba or AliExpress, you see some really nice uh, kiosks, they call, you know, uh, computer kiosks, where basically you can put any hardware you want into it, you have your touch screen, you can do anything you want, and they're very, very uh, low priced. But uh, the idea from iDite also is to give you a system which you don't have to, you know, be forced to only use their uh, computer system, you're completely open. Uh, something also very important is, you say, why is the software seeing everything so fast? I jump from one side to the other and it recognizes it instantly. That's because the technology behind it is from a company in China, which is the largest scanner, industrial scanner manufacturer. They make scanners for the auto industry. They make scanners for body scans, for face scans, and they have the technology matching smooth surfaces together. And that's the whole secret to have something like that, okay? So that's why we have the situation that the scans match so easy. If you are a small company and try to develop a software like that, it's gonna take you years. 
And uh, so they, they really have a big advantage there that they have this, this thing in the background which helps them generate uh, that kind of uh, information. So we are now at 62%, 63%, so we will be ready uh, in a few seconds. The camera just went to sleep, so he says, you're not using me, why should I, use, uh, why should I waste electricity? And this is the time normally in a dental office, you would maybe you know, put the, the temporaries in, you would do something, and uh, so the processing time is not that long, like you know, everybody would think. So we are soon uh, get, we are getting there in a few seconds, and then I will show you how the upload happens. Come on. When you have to wait, it always takes you ages and ages and ages. Uh, it's not like, uh, you know, it, I, I scanned last week in a dental office, like it was an eight unit bridge. And uh, so then, and it was the first scan, the dentist, like he wanted to see how intro scanner works. And then when he was waiting like this, he says, oh, this takes very long. I said, but what do you do when you make a, an impregum impression? You also have to wait about six minutes. Yeah, but uh, you know, I usually go and have, uh, you know, I go out and drink a quick coffee or something like that. I said, why don't you do that here also? You don't have to sit in front of the computer. You can do the same thing. But it's so fascinating for most of us. That's why we want to, you know, want to sit here and, and see what's happening. So the process is scanned and at 99% at somehow, or at 100%, it's, I think it's, it's Chinese 100% because it's not, it doesn't switch instantly. So at 100%, I have to wait a few seconds still. So I'm waiting and then you will see the data. The data gets saved automatically in your laptop into a file, okay? It's automatically saved in the, for, in the free format and uh, you don't have to bother. So this is all happening in the background. The only thing you have to do is you want to upload it to the cloud. So many dentists don't want to upload it to the cloud, then you don't have to, it's already saved. Once the 100% is finished and you see what I meant before, the 100% means doesn't mean 100%. It takes a few seconds until it's really 100%. But it'll be done just in a short second. Okay. Come on. Yeah, here we go. Huh? So now the 100% is done. The models have been uh, scanned. And now we can either use a toolkit or we can say send it to the lab. We press here the lab and it sends it to Sarah Tech, that's my lab confirm and upload, okay? So basically now I've confirmed and I will upload it to the dental laboratory. And the upload happens, uh, it depends on the speed of your internet, boom, it's finished. Now, if you want, you can basically also, uh, let me see, confirm, confirmation, huh? Now, if you want, you can basically preview your scan And in the preview, what it shows will be your model. Let me turn it around, like you see here. Let's remove the bytes. Here you can remove things. Let's remove the, the lower part, or not, the upper part. And you can see the scan here. And you can see the color of the tissue. Everything is really, it's, it's like this, this model, okay? The color is really very, very nice. The metal structure you see here also has scanned beautiful. You don't, we didn't need any powder or anything. Uh, and it's a highly shining uh, metal thing. So if you have brackets, no problem scanning brackets because they are shiny like this here. So I showed you before on the software on the right hand side, that was that little uh, icon where you can press if you have a lot of metal to scan the metal. So you basically press that small icon and you scan uh, the metals. Um, then let me get out of here. If you want to explore your data, you want to see where is my data, you can go here, explore, and you can see in the file here what it scanned. It scanned the upper jaw, it scanned the, the lower jaw, it scanned it in STL, in OBJ, 
and uh, in PLY, which is the BEB uh, format, okay? So it scans it in all these uh, formats and it saves it like this in your computer. So if you want to send it to the lab, you can either take it from here and send it, or you can send it through the cloud like I did before. So your data gets stored if you want to use the cloud in two places. This is very important. It's not just one area, it's in two areas. And uh, so this way, nothing gets lost. It says a dental project. This means if you have exo design, unfortunately, I don't have the dongle uh, for the exo design. I only have it in the lab. I don't have it here. If I would have that dongle, I have to see if I can get one from IDI. Yeah. Then I could demonstrate this to you and show you the, uh, you know, designing the crown. It automatically starts it and you can start designing your crown, drawing the margin, mm -hmm. doing the whole design very, very easy. Not so difficult like Sirona. Sirona is getting more and more difficult. They are losing the market. And I was one of their main speakers for many years, okay, because I was one of the people who developed it. So I know the ins and outs. So here we are really getting very, very fast. So let's just quickly, only just quickly, uh, say we want to scan something, a uh, new case here, okay? And we want to do a crown, uh, for example, this crown here. And uh, we want to do an implant. Uh, let me just get this picture down here. Uh, implant, custom abutment, and the material, we can say it's zircon oxide, zirconia. If you want to do a pre-ops model, you can do that. I'm just doing this to just show you quickly how this whole thing works. Huh? Uh, fast implant. Fast implant. And the moment I save it, the scan button shows up. I save it, then I start the scan. So what you see here is a new icon. You see your model, which we have to scan the situation, and then it's the upper jaw with the implant. Let me see if I've got my scan body here. I had it with me before. And here it is, okay. So what I'll do is I'll just scan this implant here, which you saw before. I won't do the whole jaw, not to lose too much time. So I pick up the camera. Come on. Turning on the scanner, here we go. A little patient. Normally, the, when the dentist scans it, the hole here where the implant is, there's maybe a healing cap on it. Or maybe the healing cap is also taken away like you see here, okay? So basically you just go left and right, huh? We get the contacts better on there, okay. Let's say we only do half a jaw, huh? Everything has happened here. There's a small. So once this has happened, we put the camera down. It's optimizing the data. Now, when we say, let me just have to get, it's always a little bit difficult here. I go to the next here, it's okay. Then it says here, put in the scan body. So now here, this is the area basically where I want to put the scan body in, okay? You can also say, okay, cut this area out if you want. And you can say, that basically finished cutting, scan this area. So I go again here. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put the scan body in. Let me put the scan body in here. Otherwise, they do not know. I'll do it now again. You just need, so what's happening here, it's so intelligent, the whole thing, that it's only scanning the tooth left and right, okay? So this is what I like. I don't want to scan the whole jaw again, which was before, you know, maybe perfectly scanned. So that's why you say, okay, only scan this region here, which you see here, 
with the scan body on it. And if you say, okay, what's happening now is, does the scan, I, have, ah, I should have closed that hole there in the proximal, I can go back again. Let me just go back here. Take the scan body away. Anytime you can come back and continue, huh? So it's processed, it's processed, complete. Yes, that was this scan here. And finish it, huh? Well, this was the thing here. This is the lower jaw. I'm not going to scan the lower jaw. I'm going to scan the occlusion complete. And it's optimizing my jaw. This was the whole scan for like the implant. Very, very straightforward. Nothing much to know. Uh, it's just everything very logical. Okay. Uh, so that's why uh, I've been seeing the dentists really like it, especially in our part of the world, because most of the dentists uh, in Switzerland are really into intro scanning. Because, I mean, the whole intro scanning started here with Professor Merman, University of Zurich, and there are lots of dentists using it. But what I've seen is hardly any of the dentists are operating the camera themselves anymore. It's always the dental assistants, the ladies in the dental office, they are using the camera. So the dentist just comes, he maybe removes the retraction cords, and then the girls just uh, scan everything. Uh, so we see this, and you know, we have done a few thousand cases now with intro scan in our lab. We get them in every day. And like I said, at the moment, uh, one of the best scans which we're getting are the Cameo, the cleanest scans. Cameo, Itero, excellent scans. Uh, also, the scans from CareStream are nice and clean. These are very, very clean. Also, Medit has very clean scans, okay? The others like prime scan are the worst for us in our dental uh, lab to be used, okay? But again, you know, you somehow you have to justify if you spend so much money, say for prime scan, you say, okay, no, prime scan is the best because spend so much money, okay? But I see the quality evidence-based and, uh, you know, many people only can say, I'm using a, this type of scanner, they can only judge it from their scanner they're using. But because we get so many different scans coming in, we can judge the different types of scans. So here I'm getting to a point to the end. Uh, the hour is over and maybe we can do some uh, Q and A's. And I don't know how, uh, let's see, just finish in a second, how we do that, the Q and A. Okay, so this was the, the finished scan. Huh? And we can upload this or we can close it. Just let me just close for a second. And if I open it again, I didn't upload it because I didn't want to send it to this guy. I can basically preview it if I open the software. So I can go load it was my last case. I can preview this and I can see the scan body and the scan. So I've got two scans. The scan body is in here, like you see here, or I can, uh, oops. Remove the scan body, yeah. Then you see the scan without the scan body and with the scan body. Okay. So basically, we have two files which the lab gets, and then he can basically design his model and everything. So this was about it for the session. And uh, if you have any questions, you know you're free to ask questions. Do I need to do anything here? Um, you can choose now to email meet them so they can speak. But what do I do? Um, um, most see. of them are now at the mute mode. They're so all in mute mode. Speak. Yeah. Uh, we no. do have a question from a customer. Uh, she asked about how to find the manual function. I think the so. metal function? 
Yeah, so it's about, I think it's about a scan. The function was very easy. Uh, it's basically a button on the side. It's when you, uh, let's see, new, new data. Uh, S3. Okay, then uh, let's, uh, let me take this down. I don't have to uh, choose anything. If I go here, I don't have to choose a crown or anything. And you see the scan thing here? This is the metal function here. And you press this, you see, metal tooth scan. You see this? Uh huh, yeah, metal tooth. That's, that's all. Yeah. So you don't have to have it all the time on. You know, if you only have one crown, you then you quickly press it before you scan that area. Mm -hmm. But you can have it also all the time on, so it doesn't really matter. So that's, that's the whole function, the metal tooth scan. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, let me just make a smaller game. So I can see you again, uh, bigger. There we go. And uh, how do I unmute that everybody is, uh, that, that people can all speak? Let's see, record. Do I just press here? Uh, I'm not sure how this. Um, maybe you can give the host back to me. Shall I give you the host back? Yeah, uh, I'll try to find that function. Uh, let me, uh, I'll give you the host and then you can, you can take care of it. Okay, so to all our attendees of this interactive scanner webinar, so now you are free to ask questions. Now you can text in this chat area and then I'll find the um, function so that just a moment. Uh, I'm still not the host. You're the host? No, you are. <laughs> okay, one second. Uh, make host. Yeah, I see. Yes. Okay, now you're the host. Okay, thank you. Let me see. Um, You got it? Yeah, I got it. And I'm just still trying to find that function. Yeah. Um. Some of the apps, some of the people are un, uh, are muted. Yeah. Ah, here. Uh, yeah. Right. Yes, so you can unmute, um, you can uh, choose now to mute. So if you have questions now, if you have any questions, you, you can just choose now to mute and then you can speak. So does anyone have questions? So it's it's really good chance because uh, Vanek, um, actually as yes, the earliest to start the invention of interest our scanner serona so he has a lot of rich experience with the development of intraoral scanner and also all kinds of intraoral scanners so it's really good chance if you have questions please feel free to ask then the pc it's included um sorry pc it's included computer it's included with uh the scanner? Mm. Um, uh, so Vanix, sorry, you are mute, so people cannot hear you. Yeah, now you can speak. Yeah, yeah. the thing that we see it's included. The question is if the computer is included with the scanner mm -hmm. in the US. Oh, and if it's for and it depends. So you can choose to, if you already have a PC and then you don't have to, to buy a, a computer from us, but we also provide computer. Are you planning on new generation coming soon for the scanner? Yes, uh, so we'll upgrade the scanner and uh, uh, it will be next year. Just to upgrade some tiny functions to make it faster and easier to operate. But currently, the the current version um, is already very good enough, as Mr. Van Eastland, good, very good enough for you to have all these scanning functions. 
the, the software is always being updated. And I've already seen like the next you know, generation software or let, let's next update which is coming. And it's got really some fantastic uh, tools also for dentists, like closing the models, uh, preparing them for printing and all those kind of things are a part of the new software. So you will see some really interesting things happening. It's at the moment in the testing phase, so it'll be, it'll be rolled out, I guess, in the beginning of the year. Okay, sir, uh, um, do you have more questions? Um, so, uh, Mr. Vanik, uh, we have another question. It's um, in the chatting area. So, Sandy uh, says, at the moment of scan, I noticed a loud noise of Camille. Is that noise a sound loud? Uh, uh, do patients complain for that sound? Uh, it depends how loud you want. It's on your computer. You can, send the, uh, you can set the audio, you know, the speaker. If you want it quieter, you just have a quiet. So it's, uh, you know, the older you get, you have to listen better. So you have to make it louder. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, you you set the settings how you want, and uh, I already had a discussion. Maybe in future that you can have your own sound. You know, maybe oh. there'll be a possibility to have your own sound in the future, uh, because the sound is now like Sirona, uh, like a machine gun, and uh, uh, the sound is basically you you put you you put the level how you want in the settings of your computer. Okay, so Sandy, I hope the quest, uh, the answer is satisfactory to you. Okay, so um, um, one last time asking, and um, is anyone having any questions? Um, if no more, so we'll call it today. So. It's in of the webinar. Yes, and uh, for me, the day is ending. <laughs> yeah. For you, the day is starting for some of you. For yeah. some of you, it's lunchtime. Five, five hours. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's really amazing, you know, how nowadays, you know, we, everything is happening around the world. Yeah. We're all, actually, we're all in the same boat, you know. We all have the same problems, the same yeah. headaches, and all these kind of things. And so, and we hope uh, when the Christmas is coming, the new year comes, and we will have a whole new year, no coronavirus, no trouble. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Nice talking to all of you. And, you know, keep uh, so, keep uh, helping. Uh, Mr. Van, this and Sandy said another question. Okay. Vincent, to this Camille intro scanner, uh, scanning is initial step for the final crown prosthetics. Uh, I'm not sure what he means. Can, um, Sandy, can I mute you so that you can talk? Um, so I, I repeat the question. So Sandy says, adjacent to this Camille intro, intro scanner, and then is scanning is initial step for the final crown prosthetics. So, um, Sandy, can you just not unmute and uh, maybe speak? Um, let me see where Sandy is. Yeah, Sandy, you can talk. Can you hear us? Oh, yeah. He said, hey, I rather type questions. Oh, okay. Sandy says he would like to see Mr. Vanek do a presentation for milling machine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think you like Mr. Vanek very much. Um, um, yes, um, we can do, we can do a uh, mini machine webinar um, by Mr. Vanek. He can do anything, you know. <laughs> He's like Santa Claus. He knows all the things in the dentistry. Not not all, but you know, we <laughs> I'm in the same boat like all of you. 
and we all have to make a living and we want to make a, a mm -hmm. profitable living with the products which we do and mm -hmm. the, the thing is it's everything has become so easy nowadays you yeah. know if i think in the early days you know making the crowns i was teaching lectures you know putting all the internal effects and everything and all this and this nowadays you know we just take multi-layer 3d pro we mill it and we basically can stain it and glaze it and people are so you have such a high quality no chipping all these problems are gone and so everything has become easier the products which we use have become easier the milling machines have become easier and the the thing is what i must say that that's one of the reasons i've started to speak for iDite is they listen to us the iDite company listens to the professional user out there and this is a big, big difference to many of the German companies, which I used to uh, collaborate with. They don't listen. They always say, yes, yes, yes. And mm -hmm. everything goes into the drawer. Okay, it's gone. Yeah. Like I developed with iDite a mixing palette. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. seen it. And I'll talk about this uh, in a, maybe a two weeks or whatever. It's a zircon oxide mixing palette for stains mm -hmm. in the right shade. And, you know, I, this idea I had about 20 years ago, all the companies always saying, yes, yes, good idea, yes, yes. I, I said, let's try, let's make it. And that's what I like. They listen to the, to the field, they listen to us and make us more successful. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not, it's, I say it's like a team, it's like a, you know, a soccer team. You know, every player is a part of this team and we are a big team, yeah. we are a big family. And yeah. that's the whole thing. That's why I like to be a part of this family. And I hope many of you join this family and be a part of it. Thank you, Mr. Vanek. You are very right. We consider every uh, our dental lab or dental office client as an EDI family. So if you have any questions for us to improve our product, service, anything, we are willing to hear you and to improve because this is our changing dental industry. We have to improve and upgrade every day. So we can create the value and bring continuous success to all our clients. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. So I think Sandy likes you very much. He said perfect uh, combination, um, Mr. Vanek and Adite, and congratulations to your today's presentation. He said thank you to you. <laughs> thank you, Sandy. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Say bye bye uh, and have a nice day to all of you and keep safe. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Vanek. It's bye really bye. a fantastic webinar. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ever. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please contact our regional sales manager and they will provide all the information you need. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye, Fiona. Bye.